First there came a shiver in the air, like a winter's breeze had caressed my face. Then came her voice, not more than a whisper on the edge of my ears, yet it was there. To date, I have not seen her face, but I have felt her lingering presence in this house. What keeps her confined here, I do not know, and as she will not tell me, I shall never know. Yet her agony haunts me nightly, and with the setting of the sun's light I am left alone with the eternal sorrow of what lurks in the dark. They are the restless spirits of the damned. Forever cursed to wander this earth until the end of time, or until their final business is dealt with. Ghosts have long been a fixation of film, literature, poetry, and society in general. Despite never quite attaining the same popularity as vampires, zombies, or werewolves, the ghost has nevertheless endured the test of time, to the point where it's even been featured prominently in a variety of other genres besides horror. Shakespeare's Hamlet is a prime example, wherein the ghost of the main character's father begs his son for revenge upon the man who murdered him. And then there's Ghostbusters, a paranormal comedy that's often regarded as one of the greatest films of all time. Belief in these paranormal entities goes back as far as human memory can recall, and even today there are millions who firmly believe that they exist in real life, including myself. So for this week's episode of What Lurks in the Dark, we'll be taking a look at the aspects of what makes ghosts so scary. From their behavior and intangible presence, to their penchant for haunting both places and people, followed by the questions they raise about life and death, and finally, I'll share my personal thoughts regarding these dearly departed souls. So without further ado, let's begin with our first subject. While the definition of many supernatural creatures may vary depending on the mythology, ghosts have remained largely the same throughout history. That the disembodied souls of those who, for one reason or another, have died without fully passing on. This can be attributed to a number of facts, but the most common cause behind ghostly activity tends to be a traumatic death, be it suicide or murder, or anything else of the sort. And it isn't limited to humans either. Everything from ghost pets to even trains and ships have allegedly been sighted throughout history, all with a common link of tragedy and trauma. But that's not the only thing that could prevent a spirit from making its safe passage to the afterlife. In some stories, even if a person dies peacefully in bed, any unfinished work of theirs in life has a chance of keeping them locked into the mortal plane. This factor alone lets itself nicely to horror. Just the idea of being trapped between life and death for eternity, or at least something close to eternity, is terrifying. How would you overcome this situation if you find yourself bound to the world of the living despite being dead? And if your window of opportunity passed with time, like, say, the person you swore revenge upon died happily and with loved ones, what then? Wouldn't you be furious enough to swear vengeance upon all of the living? And what does that say about death in general? Is there even a guarantee that we won't wind up trapped in the mortal world when it's time for us to go? And if a ghost so desires, can it turn the living into one of its own, like what happened to Jack Torrance from The Shining? What are the limits of a ghost, anyway? There's really no way to know. Like I said about zombies, the less one knows about something, the more frightening it becomes. And there's nothing in the paranormal world that's more enigmatic than ghosts. And when it comes to seeing ghosts as a threat, their level of menace can range from mischievous to malevolent. Because they're not bound by the laws of the physical plane either, there's really not a whole lot that ghosts can't do. They can walk through walls, lift objects heavier than they were in life, manifest themselves in your bathroom mirror, even appear in your dream for heaven's sakes. If a ghost wants you gone, the odds are immediately stacked high against you, and while they lack the apocalyptic threat of zombies or the predatory cunning of vampires, make no mistake, crossing a ghost is the very last thing you'd ever want to do. And what's even scarier is, it really isn't all that hard to piss them off. Go to the wrong room, angry ghost. Read its story, angry ghost. Say its name? 
you best believe you got an angry ghost on your hands. It all hinges upon what kind of ghost it is, why it has stayed behind, and what it wants. And learning the hows and whys of individual spirits is easier said than done. And who can you even go to when there's something strange in the neighborhood? Who are you gonna call? Booyah. Emphasis on the boo. Nope! 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 No, 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 no. One of the most prominent and defining characteristics of ghosts is their latent ability to take possession of a house, or object, or even a person. In paranormal circles, this act is known as haunting. Typically, it involves a ghost or other related entity making a conscious or unconscious decision to linger around a particular place. And no matter the reason behind its decision, one thing is often made abundantly clear. It has no intentions of letting go anytime soon. Invariably, hauntings are often closely linked with the ghost's own life history or have strong emotional ties with it, such as a mental patient lingering in the asylum he died in, or an old woman spending eternity with her childhood doll. Granted, not all these cases involve conscious interactive entities. In fact, there are a number of alleged ghost sightings that depict them as being little more than fragments of the past. Think of them as the animated gifts of the supernatural, repeating a single motion or past event over and over and over again as if stuck in a time loop. So what's the connection between these fragments of history and the intelligent entities that we know as ghosts? Personally speaking, I do actually have a hypothesis about what causes hauntings in the first place and what keeps ghosts tied down to earth in one form or another, and it's rooted in, of all things, physics. It's a commonly known scientific fact that matter and energy and the like cannot be destroyed. It can only change. Furthermore, everything in the world is defined by energy, from our physical bodies to our spoken words. Is it therefore out of the question to assume that historical events can leave a lasting mark on the energy of a given place, especially something like a horrific death or a string of deaths? For example, anyone who's ever visited, say, a Civil War battlefield couldn't be blamed for saying that the place feels gloomy and depressing. Is this because they're picking up on the residual energy left behind by the war? How about Wounded Knee, or any number of houses where murders and suicides have taken place? Could it be this sensation which binds a ghost to its grounds? What do you think of my hypothesis? Let me know in the comment section below. Now despite their effectiveness as a threat, when compared to most other supernatural creatures, ghosts are not particularly dangerous to the world. Furthermore, unlike many of its contemporaries, the ghost is a paranormal entity that can be avoided. Just don't go to any haunted ruins or cemeteries at night and burn every Ouija board to see. Boom! Done! No need to worry about a ghost invading your life. But there's more to these spirits than just being a threat on their own. Really think about it. What does the existence of ghosts tell us about life after death? The answer is as simple as it is unsettling, that there is one. Death has long been seen as a universal mystery by society spanning across time and the globe, to the point where it's even become something of a taboo topic for many people even today. The idea alone, everything you've ever known and held dear suddenly ceasing to exist and having to face an inevitable fate that you have no control over, is terrifying on its own. But ghosts take this fear and bring it to the next level by directly answering one of the most pressing questions that we have about death. Do we go on to an afterlife or do we simply cease to exist? Both ideas are frightening in their own right, but with the existence of life after death, suddenly a whole other series of questions is sure to follow. Is there a god? Is there a devil? Is it possible to reach paradise? Or does the universe simply not care what happens to us? In this way, ghosts become more than just a spooky paranormal figure. They represent an existential crisis that we all will ultimately have to face. That death is real, it won't be pleasant, and we still have no idea what happens to us afterward. And if I could indulge my love of science here again, quantum physics have actually implied that the idea of an afterlife may not just be religious superstition, but in fact may be very real after all. That being said, this revelation, if true, poses a very interesting question. Is it possible, even remotely, that ghosts are real?
As I'd mentioned at the start of this video, yes, I do believe in ghosts. That sounds really weird coming from a Christian, and trust me, the irony is not lost on me, but the simple fact is that there are things in this world that we simply cannot understand or explain. People experience mysterious things all the time, and as fond as we are of modern science and all the blessings that have come with it, I feel it would be ignorant of me to not admit that we don't have all the answers. Let me put it this way. A person can brag on and on and on about how they don't believe in ghosts and demons and the like, but tell them to spend the night at a haunted house, and chances are good that they'll say no. I know I sure wouldn't want to. Now of course, I don't know for certain whether they truly exist or not. There will always be evidence supporting both sides of the debate, and it's up to us to determine what's real and what isn't. So rather than trying to convince you of anything, I'll instead share my honest thoughts about the spirits themselves. Ghosts? for me, are as intriguing as they are scary. Mind you, the malevolent bringers of mayhem seen in Hollywood movies don't actually seem to represent the majority of spirits that investigators come across. Your typical garden variety type is frightening, sure, but harmful? Not really. There's really only one aggressive type of ghost that I know of, and that would be a poltergeist. For the most part, ghosts, well, they tend to be relatively docile, in that they won't actively seek to hurt anyone unless provoked. If anything, it's more likely that they'd prefer finding some way to move on to the next world, or otherwise keep people away from their haunts. I must be honest though, I've never actually encountered a ghost before. No, never have. I can't tell whether it's just dumb luck or the fact that I don't keep a Ouija board in my closet, but to date I have never once met a spirit. At least not that I know of. Would I like to? Well, maybe? As a learning experience, it would definitely make for an interesting talk. And if I can get personal here for a moment, I've always had a soft spot for the mysterious and misunderstood things in this world. And to me, ghosts fit that criteria to a T. Their very nature revolves around being enigmatic and quiet, hidden away from the world and existing largely in a realm that's all their own. And their loneliness kind of breaks my heart. I guess in this way I can almost relate to them. Growing up, I was never really popular with the other kids in my church youth group. Even in the confines of a bus ride, I was almost universally ignored unless I spoke up first. And as a homeschooler, this was generally my only social outreach. So I kind of did feel like a ghost among them. Therefore, I find myself empathizing with these lost souls to a degree. I know I'd hate to spend eternity all alone, especially in a place that used to be filled with such life. Of course, obviously, I'm no expert on the paranormal. I'm just a guy with a laptop and way too much free time on his hands. So there's bound to be tons of people who know more about ghosts than I do, and for all I know, I've got them all wrong. But it was still too interesting of a subject to not talk about. That concludes this episode of What Lurks in the Dark. Tune in next time where we'll dare to explore the historical significance and lasting horror of vampires.